Welcome to Book Root Readings, your channel for classic, nature, and living children's books. Click the subscribe button to be notified of new readings. Enjoy the story! Where Did My Clothes Come From? by Chris Butterworth, illustrated by Lucia Gaziotti. In Memory of My Mum, Who Taught Me to Sew, CB, to all the babies of my family and friends, LG. Wouldn't it be great if you could wear your favorite clothes all the time? But you need different clothes for different weather and for doing different things. You need warm clothes for cold days, cool clothes for hot days, and clothes to keep you dry in the rain. You need fancy clothes and clothes to get messy in. But what are your clothes made of? And where did they come from? What are your jeans made of? Your jeans are made of cotton, and cotton grows on bushes. A cotton seed needs lots of sun and water to grow into a bush. It takes about 10 weeks for a flower to bloom. After the flower dies, a seed pod called a cotton bowl swells and ripens. In a few more weeks, the bowl splits open and soft, snowy white cotton fibers puff out. The bowls are picked by hand or by machine. Then a machine called a gen gets rid of the seeds tangled in the cotton fibers. The cleaned cotton is put into bales and taken to a spinning mill. 1. The cotton fibers are combed straight on rollers with steel pins. This is called carding. Then the straight fibers are pulled into a thick, soft rope. 2. Next, a spinning machine stretches the fibers and twists them into a single thread called yarn. 3. In another mill, the yarn is dyed in a bath of purpley blue dye. Now it's ready to be woven into cloth. The cotton yarn is woven into cloth on a loom. Then the cloth is cut into shapes. Belt loop, waistband, yoke, pocket, leg, which are sewn together into your jeans. Your jeans are cool to wear and strong enough to stand up to rough stuff. Clothes are made from other plants too. Linen is made from the stalks of flax plants. It is some of the oldest cloth in the world. Ancient Egyptians wrapped their mummies in it and the Romans wore linen togas. The stalks of hemp plants can be made into cloth too. It's so strong that soldiers' uniforms used to be made of it. What is your sweater made of? Your sweater is made of wool, the long hair from a sheep. The sheep's wool is cut off once a year. It doesn't hurt the sheep. She's probably glad to be cool again. Raw wool is dirty and greasy, so it's taken to a mill and washed well. This is called scouring. Now the clean, dry wool can be dyed. A carding machine combs the dry fibers straight and rolls them into a thick, soft rope of wool. Next, a spinning machine gently pulls out the stretchy wool fibers and twists them into yarn. The yarn is thin, so several strands are twisted together to make wool that is thick enough to knit into clothes. 
Knitting can be done on a machine or by hand. Maybe someone in your family knit your sweater. The wool kept the sheep warm, and now it's a sweater that's keeping you cozy. Around the world, people make wool from different long-haired animals. Yaks in Tibet, bison in North America, camels in China, llamas and alpacas in South America, cashmere goats grow extra soft hair that makes silky fine sweaters. The hair from Angora goats is made into soft mohair wool for clothes and favorite teddy bears. Musk oxen in Alaska, Angora rabbit wool is really fluffy. What is your party dress made of? Some fancy dresses are made of silk. Silk is the lightest cloth of all, and it's a fiber made by insects. Silkworms are not really worms. They're the caterpillars of a small white moth. Farmers breed thousands of them, feeding them the leaves of mulberry trees. Each silkworm makes a single silk thread and winds it into a cocoon around its body. This single thread can be a mile long. The cocoons are dried, then softened in hot water. The super fine silk threads are gently unrolled and wound around a reel. These silk threads are pulled and twisted together to make a thicker, stronger yarn. Then the silk can be dyed bright colors before being woven into cloth on a loom. Silk can be made into different kinds of cloth. Floaty silk, shiny satin, soft taffeta, or rich velvet. In any form, it's ready to be made into your party dress. Perfect for a special occasion. And you feel special when you wear it. What is your soccer uniform made of? Your soccer uniform is made of fibers invented by scientists. That's why they're called synthetic or artificial fibers. They have scientific names like polyester and nylon. 1. Synthetic fibers start as a mixture of chemicals that make a kind of sticky syrup. 2. Inside a machine, this syrup is squeezed through tiny holes into thin strands that harden into fibers. 3. The fibers are pulled over rollers and twisted to make a thicker, stronger yarn. Then the yarn is wound into reels. Now the yarn is ready to be dyed and woven into cloth. Cloth made of synthetics is great for sports clothes. They wash easily, dry fast, and don't need ironing. So whoever washes your clothes loves synthetics too. What is your fleece jacket made of? Don't throw away your plastic bottles. If you recycle them, they can be turned into fleece. It takes about 12 bottles to make your fleece jacket. At the recycling plant, the plastic is sorted into different colors chopped into tiny pieces, washed, and dried. 1. The pieces are melted into a sticky syrup called polyester. 2. This syrup is squeezed through tiny holes and comes out as threads that cool and harden. 3. The threads are then stretched out and put through a hot crimping machine, which makes the fibers crinkle. 
when they cool, they feel soft and fluffy like wool. Four, the fibers are carded, spun, and dyed, then knitted into cloth. The cloth is then brushed hard on one side to make it fluff up. Your fleece jacket keeps out chilly winds. Zip it up and stay snug. What are your boots made of? Rain boots are made from rubber, a juice that comes from a tree. Rubber trees grow in hot, rainy forests. Inside their bark flows a sticky white juice called latex. Everyday workers make a long cut in the bark of each tree. It's called tapping. So the latex runs down and drips into a cup. The latex is then mixed with acid. This makes a lumpy mixture that is poured into molds. It sets and dries into hard blocks. One, the blocks of rubber are taken to a factory and pushed through hot rollers. Two, this is done over and over again until the rubber is in soft, stretchy sheets. Three, as it gets smoother, colors are mixed in. Four, then the rubber is put through another roller and rolled out into thinner sheets. Five, boot shapes are cut from the sheets. Six, the shapes are pressed around a boot mold and their edges are heated to melt them together. Pull on your rain boots and stomp in the puddles. Your boots are waterproof, so your feet stay dry. Recycling Facts Do you have clothes you've grown out of or just don't love anymore? In the richer parts of the world, people throw away millions of tons of clothes every year. That's a waste. Don't just dump those clothes. Recycle them. Give them to a friend or family member. Use the cloth to make useful things like toys, a blanket, or a bag. Take them to a thrift shop. Turn them into something new. Cut down old jeans to make shorts or a skirt. Author's Note I collect cloth from around the world. I love the colors, the patterns, and how different fabrics feel to the touch. It's amazing to think you could take animal hair or part of a plant, spin it into thread, and then weave, knit, or sew it to make something to wear. Magic. Illustrator's note. I loved illustrating this book and hope that when children read it, they will realize there's a great story behind everything they wear.